Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton, and in this video we're going to finish up our discussion on trigonometric graphs. So in the previous video we talked about how to determine the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift of the sine and cosine curves, and we also talked about graphing transformations of the sine and cosine functions including vertical and horizontal shifts, reflections, vertical stretching and shrinking, and horizontal stretching and shrinking. In this video we're going to talk about how to use appropriate technology to graph variations of the sine and cosine functions. So let's pick up where we left off. Since the sine and the cosine functions have a period of 2 pi radians, the functions y equals a times sine of k times x and y equals a times cosine of kx, where k is a positive number, they complete one period as k times x varies between 0 and 2 pi. These graphs are called the sine and cosine curves, or collectively they're referred to as sinusoidal curves. So y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x both of those functions have an amplitude of absolute value of 1, or 1, and the period of y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x, the period is 2 pi. However, if you are talking about the function y equals a times sine of x, or y equals a times cosine of x, the amplitude is the absolute value of a, what's being multiplied by the sine function, or what's being multiplied by the cosine function, and the period is unchanged, it's still 2 pi for both of these functions. However, if you have y equals a times sine of k times x, or y equals a times cosine of kx, the amplitude is the number that's being multiplied by the sine function or the cosine function in absolute value, so the amplitude is the absolute value of a, but the period is changed. The period will now be 2 pi divided by k for whatever value k that's being multiplied inside the argument of the sine function or the cosine function. So the definition of sine and cosine curves, the sine and the cosine curves, y equals a times sine of kx, or y equals a times cosine of kx, where k is the positive number, the amplitude is the absolute value of a, and the period is 2 pi divided by k. So an appropriate interval on which the graph will actually complete one period would be 0 to 2 pi divided by k, in closed brackets. So to see how the value of k affects the graph of y equals sine of kx, we're going to look at the graph of the sine curves. We're going to look at the graph of the sine curve, y equals sine of 2x, and we're going to find out that the period actually is pi for this function y equals sine of 2x and the graph will complete one period over the interval 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to pi. So the graph that's on the left is the graph of y equals sine of t, and so it actually completes one complete period between t equals 0 and t equals 2 pi. And so one period of the sine function, y equals sine of t, is for the t values between 0 and 2 pi, including the endpoints, 0 and 2 pi. And the domain of this entire sine function is from negative infinity to infinity, and the range, the smallest y value for the sine function is negative 1, and the largest y value that the sine function attains is positive 1. However, let's look at the function y equals sine of 2 times x. It will complete one period within pi radians. And so the domain of the function is from negative infinity to infinity, and the range is still unchanged as well. It's also negative 1 to 1, but let's see what happens if we multiply by 2 with the x inside the argument of the sine function. Well, this has the effect of horizontally compressing or horizontally shrinking the entire graph towards the y-axis by a factor of 1 half. So instead of having a period of 2 pi, it's going to push the graph towards the y-axis and it's going to shorten its period to be now pi radians rather than 2 pi radians. So if we have the graph y equals sine of 2x, the effect will be horizontally shrinking the graph of y equals sine of x by a factor of 1 half. So what transformation would occur if we extended the period of the sine function from 2 pi to 4 pi? Well, if the transformation where the period of the sine function is extended to 4 pi instead of 2 pi, then we would have the function y equals sine of 1 half times x, because that would be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 divided by 1 half, or it'd be a factor of 2. So we see that the effect is a horizontal shrink if the value of k is greater than 1, and it's a horizontal stretch of the graph if k is greater than 0 but less than 1. And so for comparison, the following figure shows the graphs of one period of the sine curve, y equals a times sine of kx, for various values of k. So the graph that's in red is y equals a times sine of 2x. The amplitude is the absolute value of a, so the graph will have no larger y values than positive a, and it'll have no smaller y values than negative a, so the range of the graph would be from negative a to a for the graph of y equals a times sine of 2x. However, we're multiplying the x value by 2, that's going to have the effect of horizontally shrinking the graph by a factor of 1 half. So notice that the graph y equals a times sine of x, the one that's in black, the period of that graph is 2 pi, because that graph will start repeating the values after 2 pi. The graph that's in red, y equals a times sine of 2x, it actually has a period of just pi radians rather than 2 pi. So it looks like the period has been shortened from 2 pi to pi radians.
And so the graph of y equals a times sine of 2x, that's a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half, that's the transformation to actually obtain its graph from y equals sine of x, and also has the period of 2 pi divided by k, which k is in this case is 2. So it's 2 pi divided by 2, and so the period of this graph will be pi. Now let's take a look at the graph that's in blue. It looks like this graph has a period of 4 pi, because it looks like the period has been extended from 2 pi radians now to 4 pi radians before it starts repeating the values. So this graph is y equals a times sine of 1 half x. That is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2 because the k is 1 half. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 divided by k or 1 divided by 1 half, which is 2. The period has been extended to 4 pi. So the period is now 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is really 2 pi times 2. So the period of this graph, y equals a times sine of 1 half x, is 4 pi. And then the graph that's in gold is y equals a times sine of 1 third x. So y equals a times sine of 1 third x. So that's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3 because the k is 1 third. It's 1 divided by 1 third. And so the factor is 3. The period of the sine function is originally 2 pi radians. Well, the period for this function will be 2 pi divided by k, which will be 2 pi divided by 1 third. That's 2 pi times 3. And so the period of the graph that's in gold will now be 6 pi radians. So the graph will start repeating the values after 6 pi radians. So let's look at example 3, amplitude and period. Determine the amplitude and the period for the following trigonometric functions and then graph one complete period of the function with key points labeled. So number one, we're going to graph the function and also determine the amplitude and period for the function f of x equals three times cosine of two x. So notice that the amplitude is the absolute value of three or just three. So the graph will range between the values of y equals negative three and y equals positive three. The period of this graph, well, we were talking about the cosine function. Well, the period of the cosine function is originally 2 pi, but then if we multiply by 2 on the inside with the argument of the cosine function, then we have to take 2 pi and divide by 2, and that is now pi. So it looks like the period of this graph is just pi radians rather than 2 pi radians. So from the graph of the basic trigonometric function, y equals cosine of x, the 3 will be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, and the 2 that's inside the argument of the cosine function will have the effect of a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half. And so if we want to graph this function, we only need to graph one complete period of this function, and the period is pi. So if we graph between x equals 0 and x equals pi, we'll have the entire graph, and it will just repeat the pattern after every pi radians. So let's see what the value is whenever x equals 0. So when x equals 0, you'll have 2 times 0 inside the cosine function. Cosine of 0 is equal to 1, and then times 3 will give you 3. So the graph will start at the point 0, 3. The graph of the cosine function, y equals cosine of x, it decreases between x equals 0 and x equals pi. However, since the period is now pi, the graph of this function, f of x, will actually decrease from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 2. So whenever x is equal to pi over 2, the y value is going to be negative 3. And then after x equals pi over 2, the graph will start to increase until you get back to x equals pi, where you'll have a y value of 3 again. Because we know the period of this function will be pi, it will end up at the y value of 3 after pi radians, because that's where we started, at 0, 3. And so it looks like the graph will increase from x equals pi over 2, comma, negative 3, until the point pi, comma, 3. And it'll pass the x-axis at pi over 4, and also 3 pi over 4. And so this is a graph of y equals 3 times cosine of 2x. It's a horizontal shrink or compression by a factor of 1 half, and also a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. The period is pi, and the amplitude is 3. So let's take a look at number 2. This time we're going to graph the function g of x, which is equal to negative 2 times sine of 1 third times x inside the parentheses. So 1 third x is the argument of the sine function. So let's find out what is the amplitude of this function. The absolute value of the number that's being multiplied by the sine function. So it's the absolute value of negative 2, which is positive 2. So the amplitude is 2. That tells us that the range of this graph will range between a y value of negative 2 and a y value of positive 2. The period of the sine function is 2 pi. Now let's see what happens whenever we have 1 third x rather than just x as the argument of the sine function. Well, the period would be 2 pi divided by k. So 2 pi divided by 1 third, because k is 1 third, that actually will make the period 6 pi. So in other words, this graph will actually start repeating the values after 6 pi radians. So now let's find out what are the transformations to actually graph this function g of x from the basic trigonometric function y equals sine of x. So the negative on the outside will have the effect of multiplying the y values by a negative number. So that means it's going to be a reflection about the x-axis. And there's also a 2 on the outside of the sine function. That's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. But then on the inside of the sine function, you have 1 third x rather than just positive 1 x. So that is going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 divided by k. Well, k is 1 third, so it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 divided by 1 third, or by a factor of 3. 
So that's going to have the effect of stretching the graph away from the y-axis. So the sine function starts at 0, 0. So let's find out. If x equals 0, we'll have sine of 1 third times 0. That 1 third times 0 is 0. So sine of 0, that is 0, times negative 2, that's still 0. So the graph's going to start at 0, 0. Now let's find out what happens to the graph. Well, since it's a reflection across the x-axis, the sine function actually originally increases between x equals 0 and x equals pi over 2. Well, now the graph's going to decrease after x equals 0. So it's going to decrease until we get to x equals 3 pi over 2. So the lowest that the graph will go down will be y equals negative 2. Then the graph will start to increase after x equals 3 pi over 2. It'll increase until we get to 9 pi over 2, where the y value will be positive 2. And then, since the period of this function is 6 pi, eventually the graph will start to decrease again after x equals 9 pi over 2. It'll decrease until you get to x equals 6 pi, and that's where we started, with y equals 0. So that is one complete period of the graph of this function, g of x equals negative 2 times sine of 1 third x. It's a reflection about the x-axis. It's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, and also a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3 from the graph of y equals sine of x. So the graphs of the trigonometric functions of the form y equals a times sine of k times the quantity x attract b, and y equals a times cosine of k times the quantity x attract b, where k is still a positive number, those are sine and cosine curves, but they're shifted horizontally by the amount of the absolute value of b. So if we're going to graph either of these two different types of functions, we're going to have to factor out the value of k from both terms of the argument of the sine function or the cosine function to find out what is the horizontal shift. Is it a shift left or is it a horizontal shift to the right, b units? So the definition of a shifted sine or cosine curve, the sine and the cosine curve, y equals a times sine of k times the quantity x attract b, so k times the quantity x attract b is the argument of the sine function, and y equals a times cosine of k times the quantity x attract b. So again, k times the quantity x attract b is the argument of the cosine function. If k is the positive number, the amplitude is the absolute value of a, so what's being multiplied by the sine and the cosine function on the outside, that's the amplitude, absolute value of a. The period of the function is changed because we're multiplying by k inside the argument of the sine and the cosine function. So the period will now be 2 pi divided by k, and the horizontal shift is now by the quantity b. If b is positive, it will be a horizontal shift right, and if b is negative, it will be a horizontal shift left, b units. And so an appropriate interval on which to graph one complete period of these two sine or cosine functions is b to b plus 2 pi over k, because 2 pi over k is the period of either the sine or the cosine function in this case. And so starting at x equals b to x equals b plus 2 pi over k, that actually will be one complete period of these graphs. So example four, we're going to look at a horizontally shifted sinusoidal curve. Determine the amplitude, the period, and the horizontal shift for the following trigonometric functions, and then graph one complete period of the function with key points labeled. So number one, the function is f of x equals 3 times sine of the quantity 2x attract pi over 2. So again, the first step that we need to do is actually factor out what is the value of k from both terms of the argument of the sine function. So notice it's not just x, it's 2 times x. So let's factor out 2 from both terms of the argument. So if you factor out a 2 from 2x, you're left over with an x. If you factor out a 2 from pi over 2, now you need a pi over 4 because 2 times pi over 4 would give you pi over 2. So if you factor out a 2 from pi over 2, now it's pi over 4. So now we have the function rewritten so we can identify the k and also the value of b. So you have the function f of x is 3 times sine of the quantity, 2 times the quantity x attract pi over 4. So let's find out the amplitude of this function first. The amplitude is the absolute value of 3 because the sine function is being multiplied by 3 on the outside. So that would be absolute value of 3 is 3. So the amplitude tells us the graph will range between the y values of y equals negative 3 and y equals positive 3. Now let's talk about the period of this graph. The period of the function will be 2 pi divided by k. So the period of the function will be 2 pi divided by k. Well, it looks like the k is 2 because we factor out 2 from both terms. So it'll be 2 pi divided by 2, and so that simplifies to pi. So the function will actually start repeating values after pi radians. And we also can identify the horizontal shift. It looks like it will be x attract pi over 4. Well, pi over 4 is the value of b. And so since b is a positive number, it's a horizontal shift right pi over 4 units. So let's find out all the transformations before we graph. It looks like it will be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 because we're multiplying by 3 on the outside of the sine function. It will be a horizontal shrink or compression by a factor of 1 half because the period is now pi. We multiply by 2 inside the argument of this function and so that will have the effect of shortening the period to pi radians and also that means that the graph will be a horizontal shrink or compression by a factor of 1 half. And then we also found out it was a horizontal shift 
write pi over 4 units. So let's find out if x equals 0, what is the y value? So if x equals 0, 2 times 0 will give you 0. 0 subtract pi over 2 is negative pi over 2. Sine of negative pi over 2 is actually negative 1. And so 3 times negative 1 gives you negative 3. So whenever x equals 0, the graph will start at the y value of negative 3. And we know the graph will go no lower than y equals negative 3 because the amplitude was 3. And so the graph will start to increase after x equals 0. The graph will increase until you get to x equals pi over 2 because the y value is positive 3. And the graph passes the x-axis at x equals pi over 4 because the y value is 0. After x equals pi over 2, the graph will start to decrease, and it'll cross the x-axis at x equals 3 pi over 4, and then it'll decrease until you get to x equals pi, which was the period of the graph. And so at pi, the y value is also negative 3, because we also had x equals 0, and the y value is negative 3. So that is one complete period of the graph of f of x equals 3 times sine of 2x subtract pi over 2. The graph will just repeat the same values every pi radiance. So number two, we're going to graph this function. g of x is equal to 3 fourths times cosine of 2x plus 2 pi over 3. That's the argument of the cosine function this time. It looks like we have to factor out a 2 from inside the argument of the cosine function because it's not just x, it's 2 times x. So if we factor out 2 from the first term, you'll have an x left over. And if you factor out 2 from 2 pi over 3, that will simplify to 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. So it looks like the function g of x can be rewritten as 3 fourths on the outside of the cosine function times cosine of the quantity 2 times the quantity x plus pi over 3. And so that helps us identify the value of k and also the value of b. So let's talk about the amplitude. The amplitude is the absolute value of 3 fourths because the number that's being multiplied by the cosine function is 3 fourths. So the amplitude of the function is absolute value of 3 fourths or 3 fourths. So the graph will range between the y value of y equals negative 3 fourths and y equals positive 3 fourths. The period of the function y equals cosine of x is 2 pi. Well, we factored out 2 from both terms of the argument, and then we found out the k was 2. So we need to find out what is the period of this function. It'll be 2 pi over k, or 2 pi over 2, which will simplify to pi. So the graph will start to repeat values after pi radians. And then also, we have x plus pi over 3 after we factor out the 2 from both terms of the argument. Well, since b is negative pi over 3, because it's always x attract b in terms of sinusoidal curves, the b is negative pi over 3. That means we're going to have a horizontal shift left pi over 3 units. So the transformation is to actually obtain the graph of g of x equals 3 fourths times cosine of the quantity 2x plus 2 pi over 3 is a vertical shrink by a factor of 3 fourths because the value of a is less than 1 is a vertical shrink by a factor of 3 fourths. We also have a horizontal shrink or compression by a factor of 1 half because the value of k is 2, that's greater than 1, so it's a horizontal shrink or compression by a factor of 1 over k or 1 over 2. And we also found out that it's a horizontal shift left pi over 3 units. So again, let's find out what is the y-intercept? Whenever x equals 0, what's the y-value? So whenever x equals 0, you'll have 2 times 0, that's 0. 0 plus 2 pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half, and so 3 fourths times negative 1 half will actually be negative 3 eighths. And then the graph will decrease from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 6, and the y value will be negative 3 fourths. That's the smallest y value that the graph will obtain. It'll be a y value of negative 3 fourths because the amplitude is 3 fourths. After x equals pi over 6, the graph will start to increase. It'll cross the x-axis at 5 pi over 12, and it'll continue to increase after that until you get to x equals 2 pi over 3, because whenever you plug in 2 pi over 3 in for the x value, the y value is 3 fourths. That's the largest y value that the graph will obtain. After x equals 2 pi over 3, the graph will decrease until you get back to 7 pi over 6 for the x value, and the y value is negative 3 fourths. So we've completed one complete period between x equals pi over 6 and x equals 7 pi over 6, because the y values are negative 3 fourths and also negative 3 fourths, so the graph will start to repeat values after x equals 7 pi over 6. So this is a graph of the function g of x equals 3 fourths times cosine of the quantity 2x plus 2 pi over 3. It was a vertical shrink by a factor of 3 fourths, a horizontal shrink or compression by a factor of 1 half, and also a horizontal shift left pi over 3 units. So let's finish up this video by talking about using graphing devices to graph trigonometric functions. When you use a graphing calculator or a computer to graph a trigonometric function, it's very important to choose a viewing window such that will produce a reasonable graph of the function. So in example five, we're gonna have a cosine function with a variable amplitude. So graph the functions y equals x squared, y equals negative x squared, and y equals x squared times cosine of six pi x. So six pi x is the argument of the cosine function in this case on an appropriate common viewing window so that you can see all three functions graphs. We're going to determine the value that the function y equals x squared times cosine of 6 pi x approaches as x approaches 0. So whenever the x value gets really close to 0, 
What do the y values, or what does this function actually approach? What can be said about the relationship between the three functions? So we're going to find out what do the three graphs look like on a common viewing window. So let's go to y equals so we can actually graph the functions. We're going to graph x squared underneath y1. We're going to graph the opposite of x squared as y2. And then we're also going to graph the trigonometric function under y3. It's x squared times cosine of 6 pi times x as the argument. So 6 pi x is the argument of the cosine function. So once you have the three functions entered, now we're actually going to set up a viewing window so we can see all three graphs. So let's go to window. And now we're going to set up the x min to be negative pi divided by 2. So negative pi over 2 for the x min. So negative pi divided by 2. We're going to have the largest x value be positive pi over 2. So pi over 2 for the x value max. So the x scale, we're going to count by pi divided by 6. So pi over 6 is the x scale. So that's how much the x tick marks will actually count by. The y min, we're going to make negative 1. The y max will make positive 1. And the y tick marks or the y scale will be positive 1. So each tick mark on the y axis will count by 1s. Now hit graph to actually find out what does the graph actually look like. So that's y equals x squared. y equals the opposite of x squared. And this was the graph of the trigonometric function y equals x squared times cosine of 6 pi x. So what is the relationship that you see among the three functions? It looks like the trigonometric function is always between y equals x squared and y equals negative x squared. It looks like the trigonometric function is always below y equals x squared, which was a parabola that was opening upward. And it looks like the trigonometric function is always above the graph of y equals the opposite of x squared, which was a parabola that was opening down. It looks like the graph of the trigonometric function is always between the two parabolas for all x values. And so going back to the original question about this problem, it said determine the value of the function y equals x squared times cosine of 6 pi x. What's the value that the function actually approaches as x approaches 0? Well, it looks like this trigonometric function is being squished or squeezed between the two parabolas. So what is the y value of y equals x squared whenever x is really close to 0? Whenever x is really close to 0, y equals x squared graph, the y value is 0. So it actually crosses the x-axis and the y-axis as 0, 0, or the origin. Same thing for y equals the opposite of x squared. The x value is 0 means the y value is also 0. And so the graph will actually touch the x-axis or the y-axis at 0, 0, or the origin. Which means if this trigonometric function is always between the two parabolas, it's going to be squeezed or squished to have a y value approaching y equals 0 whenever x gets really close to 0. So to answer the question, it appears that the y values will approach y equals 0 as x values approach 0 for this trigonometric function. And it also looks like the trigonometric function is always between no larger than y equals x squared and no smaller than y equals negative x squared for all x values. And so since x squared is really close to y equals 0 whenever x is really close to 0, and the same thing, the y value is really close to 0 for the opposite of x squared whenever x is really close to 0, and this trigonometric function is always between the two of them, then the y value of this trigonometric function will also get really close to 0 for a y value whenever x gets really close to 0. So this finishes our video on trigonometric graphs. We've talked about how to use appropriate technology to graph variations of the sine and cosine functions. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about more trigonometric graphs.